Hello again everyone. This is a 64 Continental that I've been wanting to try some paintwork on. I want to do a sort of goth inspired lowrider. I want a striking paint job, something that stands out and Mattel would probably not do. So let's get started by taking this car apart. As usual I'd like to start with the body. I really like this body type as far as die cast cars go. The headlights and tail lights, along with the front grille are all cast into the base and not into the body. So I don't have to worry about destroying all my work if I make a mistake painting in the tail lights. Let's go ahead and remove the paint. With the paint removed I can see quite a bit of pitting and flashing around the windows along with mold lines in the front and back. I'll remove all this with sandpaper and emery boards until I get a nice clean surface. This is a pretty popular casting and I have noticed that the casting quality has really gone down over the years. The dyes that Mattel uses wear out over time and this shows up in casting as faded details. The windshield wipers and door handles are less defined than a casting made more recently. The next step can be skipped if you like, but I like to go over the body with a dental tool and deepen the panel lines. This helps better define the lines and adds a bit more realism to the casting. It also helps remove any stubborn paint that may have remained behind. The best part is that it gives you some leeway so that when you paint the car later, you won't fill in the panel lines. So at this point I feel I have the body cleaned up and will go ahead and apply my first coat of primer. This first coat will expose any issues I may have missed. Nothing stuck out so I'll apply a second coat of primer, this time a white primer, instead of the gray. This will save me from having to paint the car white and adding another coat of paint further covering up the details. Over the top of this white primer I'll apply some wash. Here a sepia tone wash. While the wash is still wet I will blot it with a paper towel. I will then repeat this process with a black wash. This may seem rather strange to do right now but you'll see why later. After the wash dries I will clear coat it with matte clear coat and set it aside to dry. Using my laser engraver I'll make some stencils from clip art. I have a video on how this is done and will put links in the video and description if you're interested in checking that out. Over the top of these stencils I will apply some transfer tape. I will then turn them over and remove the foil backs, transferring the stencils to the tape. I use foil because the laser won't cut through it and also because it is so thin that it can bend over 360 degrees onto itself. This helps transfer the small details to the transfer tape. With the stencils are masked on the transfer tape, I can cut them out and start applying them to the body of the car over the areas I painted with the wash. I'm using the same image for all three stencils, though I did mirror the image for one of them. I can disguise the fact that I'm using the same image by placing the skulls in random ways. Once the skull has been placed, I peel off the transfer tape, leaving behind the skull mask. Since the tape I am using is very low tack, I can move things around very easily with small tweezers until I get the placement I want. I'm going for a rather asymmetrical look with no real pattern as far as the skull placement is concerned. Here's what the car looked like after the skulls were applied. Great care must be taken to be sure that each skull is pressed firmly to the body of the car so that the paint can't get under the mask around the edges. I'll paint the car in black acrylic using an airbrush. I like acrylic for this as other paints tend to be gummy, making the mask removal difficult. Acrylic doesn't have this issue unless you apply a very thick layer of paint. When I'm finished with the airbrush, I immediately begin removing the mask to avoid any paint peel. If you wait too long, there is a chance that when you remove the mask, the paint will peel up with your mask. This will of course ruin the entire paint job, causing you to strip everything down and have to start over. Using thin layers of paint and removing the mask while the paint is still wet will keep this from happening. After I remove all the masks, I'll then apply a coat of matte clear coat over the body to protect what I've done so far and to make the next step easier. That next step is to come in with the airbrush and add shading to the skulls. This sort of requires that you have some artistic talent, of which I have very little, but you want to imagine a light source for this image and then place the shadows where they would go based on that light source. So for example, the temples and the eyes would need to be shaded if the light source was overhead. I also want to go over all the lines around the skulls because I want the skulls to look like they are emerging from the darkness. So I need to fade out these sharp lines of contrast. The matte clear coat helps as glossy surfaces tend to promote runs. This is probably not the best project if you're not familiar with how to use an airbrush. 
Here's how it looked after I was done adding in all the shading. Once the paint was dry, I clear coated everything with a gloss clear coat. Once it had set up, I added three more coats to build up a nice clear coat layer. This was done so I could polish the clear coat with polishing compound and a buffing wheel. For best results, I recommend letting the clear coat dry for at least 24 hours before polishing. With the body complete after polishing, I can now turn my attention to the interior. I've had a lot of people comment that they would like to see more effort put into the interiors, so I'll go to a bit more trouble on this one. The first thing I'll do is airbrush the interior black. Then using a mini Q-tip dipped in acrylic thinners, I'll remove the black paint from the seats leaving the paint in the creases. The next step is kind of strange, but I'm going to spray the interior with this flat clear coat by Valspar. What makes this strange is that I'm going to spray the part from about 3 feet away and in very short bursts. This is going to give the plastic a texture, a texture that I hope in the end looks like leather. With my texture applied, I can now paint the interior the color I want, in this case red. I use an airbrush to apply the paint in light coats. Since the paint can't give perfect coverage, the black paint I applied earlier will still be seen through the red, but in a much more muted state. This technique is called pre-shading, and there are lots of videos on it if you search for pre-shading on YouTube. This is what the surface looks like after the paint is applied. To finish the leather look, I'll need to apply a coat of Tester's Matte Clear Coat over the top. This last coat will blend everything together and give a more leather-like look after it dries. I'll then go in and airbrush the front dash and steering wheel black and add a second coat of Matte Clear Coat. The final work done on this car was to remove the wheels and axles and then lightly go over the base with black and then clear coat with a matte clear coat. This just tones down the chrome on the base. I then painted in the tail lights with a red sharpie and did the same to the steering wheel but with a silver sharpie. The last thing I did was to do a wheel swap. These came off of a Johnny Lightning. Since they are more realistic and have a slightly smaller diameter, the car sits even lower to the ground than before, but it still rolls fine on a smooth surface. It's a bit difficult to see into this car, but hopefully you can see the leather seats. So this car was pretty time consuming to build. What you're seeing in about nine minutes took several hours over several days. The beauty of video editing. One of the things I didn't go into earlier was the airbrush and paint setup. For example, when I painted over the masks, I had added some paint retarder along with some acrylic thinners to cause the paint to stay wet longer. This makes removing the mask simpler. While I used this thinned out paint on the mask, the paint I used for the shading was a completely different mix and used no paint retarder and less thinners. The paint was not mixed and then simply applied. I first tested the paint on similar surfaces at the distance and air pressure I was planning to use to allow me to get the airbrush that close to the car body. Needless to say, this all takes a lot of practice and mistakes, but if you're interested in videos focused on airbrushing these cars, then let me know below and I'll make videos on that subject. Well, that's going to complete this custom. If you have any questions, please ask. And as always, thanks for watching.